All right, we are live. This is our first time to ever go live. So good evening, everyone. Um, I don't really know what we're going to talk about. We didn't really plan any, anything to talk about, did we? We didn't. We um, gave a little bit of a garden update yesterday, and we talked about some about our bees swarming. Oh, I got to turn this down. Hey, guys. I see a lot of names that we know. Hey, Alderman Farms, Patrick McMorris. Gossmania. Mania. We've got like three phones going. Yeah, so all we the were, volumes are crazy. We, Sorry about that. We tried our mobile device first and quickly realized <laughs> that that was not going to work. So we had to whip out the computer. The battery was dead. We got it plugged up. Got everything set up. It was a lot more complicated than we expected. So we were both trying our hardest to uh, get this thing set up and going. But anyway, um, Thanks, Patrick. The the bees, yeah, yesterday Colby goes out and we had already lost one swarm that we seen just like take off. And yesterday afternoon, uh, another, we had another swarm go out. But the crazy thing is, this is not the whole hive. It's just part. We part lost of a it, very so. small part. I, I checked them this morning after I milked. And, um, and basically it looks like uh, the queen left and, and maybe a lot of their bees, but because we gave her a space before she left, um, I think a lot of the bees stay. So I'm, I'm, I think we're okay there. We're going to check it again tomorrow just to make sure. But uh, out of losing basically two splits, we were able to still split off those same hives. So uh, we're still plus on the beekeeping. So that's why you split because you never know what you may lose when it comes to swarming. So, but uh, they're doing good. Um, We've got a few hives that we still got to take a little spring honey off of. We're going to let them try to cap off the rest of their honey. Uh, and so we'll have videos on that as well. So, Hey, Heather. We see a lot of names that we know. Thank you all for coming on. Um, the greenhouse, we're still getting a lot of red tomatoes off of our uh fall tomatoes from last year. Um, all of the tomatoes that we have planted so far this year, though, We've got lots and lots of green ones, but no red yet. How can you tell if a queen left? Patrick, basically, you do look for um, most of our hives used to be. Um, hey, Stivers. Used to Thank y'all for a, jumping on. Uh, a marked bee. Uh, we usually mark them and mark our queen so we kind of see them with a the highlighted uh, little pin mark on them. But uh, what we've done lately, because we've got so much new queens, we just try to find her or find evidence of her, such as open brood or closed brood. And, and of course, that's all mentioned in the videos. But. Uh, basically when they're swarming she's going to be one of the first ones to go so basically she's going to go with her loyal subjects her loyal bees and then from there they'll leave usually a queen cell which is is the new queen uh, and then a lot of bees plus a lot of brood which is what's going to keep your hive going uh, what you don't want to see in a, in a swarm is that you lose all your bees or the majority of your bees so so far we've lost two um, but we really hadn't lost the majority of the hive so they've Pretty much sustained so that's what's good hey bandana grandma overlook valley thank y'all for joining us as well hey stivers i didn't get to say hey a while ago but that's how you tell patrick and see what's so crazy is we we saw two queen cells in there the day before so we were trying to cut them out and trying to make sure we could not lose that hive because that was one of our newer hives uh we were excited about great queen um however we, we ended up still losing it after all that so Hopefully, they'll and come the back crazy thing too is we had baited two baited boxes right off to the side of them, and they didn't even go to that. I so I mean, some you win, some you lose, some. And speaking of that, it's funny that we've been. I've been telling Colby I've been out in the garden like almost daily because it's been a battle against the bugs between the stink bugs and the aphids, which the aphids are much more under control now. Hey, fairy tale. Um. Well, I went out and sprayed those down with water, like with a water hose and just really blasted them and got a lot of them off. And then I took some garlic and some water and went out and sprayed them down real heavy. And then it was dry for a few days. And then we had a few days of rain and which we really needed. And so then I went back out and diluted some neem oil and sprayed them down again. And that, so the aphids are really much under control. Thankfully, we're still having some. I, I, I've been on like slug alert <laughs> i've been smashing slugs and everything but it's a battle for the garden you know i mean i feel like we're constantly one trying thing, to do stuff to save save it and uh one thing hello narrow way 
Uh, our garden this year was our first time we ever tried a garden that has been uh, non-GMO, fully organic, uh, no fertilizer. That's that's not natural. Everything has been completely organic in our garden this year. All the amendments, everything's been natural. Uh, one thing I've learned about having heirloom organic seeds on everything we do is bugs love that. So there's no there's nothing in there that that uh, kind of helps uh, like a hybrid seed that can handle some of that. So we planted a lot. Our, our tomatoes we've really enjoyed. Uh, our corn didn't thrive this year. We'll have a video on it. So the pros and cons for us is uh, the heirloom corns that we got, which are wonderful seeds, it just didn't do well. So we're going to have to figure out something on the corn. But everything else so far has been, I thought, really good. Uh, the corns didn't do well. The aldermans, I'm not sure if that's Miss Patty or Mr. Tommy, but stink bugs, they're like attacking my blueberries. <laughs> they and are. And speaking of slaughtering bugs, me and the girls will go out and we're picking blueberries and I see one. One of us will take our flip flops off and I'll just take the flip flops and just smash them. But I had somebody tell me the other day, they were like, you need to be careful. Those things will bite you and they hurt really bad. And I had read that somewhere, but I just kind of brushed it hey, off Jamie. like it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, but yeah, they said that the bites are worse than like bee sting. So thankfully we've never had uh, any bite us, but no. I've been going out there literally smashing them with my flip flop because they're like attacking my blueberry bushes like terribly. So this has been the best year for blueberries as you've told me that we have had just gallons of, of blueberries and um I, I, that's probably the we've had the best blueberry harvest that we've ever had. So I think they've done But those well. stink bugs are definitely here, they're more geared towards our blueberry bushes. So um well on the, on the cow front, uh if you're talking about bees. Um, our cows are currently doing well. Uh, I was just telling Misty, we have Allie, which is um, the one that we've had the longest. Uh, she's the one with the horn. Yeah, she's the one with the horns and, and the leader of the whole pack, really. She's the smallest, but the leader. Um, but what I'm thinking is we, we know she's bred. We are expecting her to be bred to our uh, little Jersey bull. But, but she is bagging up really well. And so on our plans, we're thinking she's supposed to calf. October, November. Yeah. Uh, I, I, she is bagging up and kind of swelling. So uh, the guy we bought her from is a dear friend, but I think he either let her out one day or either <laughs> she got out here and had a friend over or something. We're going to really be keeping an eye. Yeah, we're going to have to really keep an eye on her, which we've never had a calf here. So we don't know what to expect as far as just seeing it but we've because we've watched so many other people uh, we kind of have an idea of what to expect and because her bag is getting so big she's kind of starting to get swollen back there so um even the guy that we bought her from when Trent he came up it. he said wow she is huge so I mean I'm thankfully thankfully we weren't the only ones caught off guard <laughs> by that because it come from him so he said she had never been with a bull but I don't know that's gonna be so I guess we'll see if surprise. it's gonna be a jersey and or he has uh, an Angus bull so we'll see if it's gonna be an Angus uh, cross or either a full jersey so we're kind of excited about that she is really bagging up and I think that she's getting a little bit closer than what we anticipated. So we'll see what Mr. happens. Mr. Tommy said that the stink bugs are causing problems with their tomatoes. Are they in your high tunnel, Mr. Tommy? Nana Kay, thank you for joining us. I agree. Overlooked. Pete's little homestead. Thank y'all. We have, we actually have two bulls. The one bull that's here is the smallest bull. So we oh, tend wow. to, we tend to, um, I think I think he's the one bred her. But like I said, I really do think that, that she's bagging up a little quicker than what we anticipated. So I'm, uh, I don't know. Heather we're, said we're could be twins. I mentioned that. I told that to I Colby. So. I said, I wonder if she's going to have twins because no. they do have twins sometimes, but it's not very common. But maybe. I hope not because they usually do they have so much, so much problem. So I don't know. We'll see. But on the upside of our cows is... If y'all watched any of our older videos, y'all know that we had a lot of problem with our milking machine and we have yeah. the milking <laughs> machine working now. So it has its pros and its cons, but it's working. And um, I think overall it's been it's been good. good. I mean, it, it, I, it does not cut down on my time dealing with milk, uh, but it does cut down on the time of, of actually hand milking. So it does make it a little bit easier. 
um, the, the milker has some pros and cons. And again, we talked about it in that video before, but uh, overall, as long as you do the, the little maintenance on it and do the uh, little modifications, it really does work well. And it does cut down time. And the kids kind of came out there today, so they're not out there for a long time. Mm -hmm. We're spending more time cleaning than we are actually milking uh, compared to like we used to just hand milk. So, yeah. but we, it's done real well. Our, our uh, Elsa, our milk cow, she was, she went from having about a gallon production to, we got her up to almost uh, really kind of hanging around 1.9 to 2 gallons a day. Uh, and we only milk once in the mornings. But um, after kind of going from into the springtime where grass was not fully grown yet, and she was a little bit more on hay in the dead part of the rye, uh, and not really a lot of the, the spring and summer grass coming back up. She got back down to about 1.2, 1.3. But now, hey, we're back up to about a gallon and a half to, to two gallons every day. So it's really going well. We, we've we been real pleased with that. And that's, that's really enough for us because in Mississippi, we really can't sell it. So it's one of those things that we can make butter out of. We can make yogurt out of it, sour cream. and, and but it's, it's one of those things where that's plenty for us, a gallon and a half, two gallons. Yeah, so. hand milking can be rough, especially when you're not used to it. Um, I went out there just a few times, but it's really not for me. So when we decided <laughs> to add our uh, Jersey cow to the farm, Thanks, we had Mary. an agreement that he was going to be in charge of that. So I help him when he I is in dire slept. need of help. I've not slept past <laughs> 4 to 4.30. There was one morning that it was actually uh, the power went out and uh, I was hand milking at the time, but the power went out. But it's so dark in our stanchion, I had an excuse to stay in bed till daybreak. <laughs> so that was the first morning that I slept till like six. And that That's, was the, yeah, the last had, time I slept. Yeah, till we six, had so. some bad weather that weekend. <laughs> but Bandana Grandma, yes, we are still coming to the hey, Pratt family hoot nanny. And we are super excited about that. Um, so the Pratt's. Um, live in Michigan and we're going to be going to that at the end of July. Um, it's a homesteading gathering and we are super excited. While we're there, we're going to buzz over. I do not remember where Luke what and town? Sydney, I don't remember I what don't town, either. but so Luke and Sydney are from MI Gardener and um, we bought, I would say what, 95% oh, yeah. of our seed from them this year and have been very pleased. But, um, we're going to go visit with them. Hopefully, I hope the Aldermans are still coming with us. Um, so we're going to go visit them as well while we're up in Michigan. Um, so we're super excited about that. Neither one of us have ever been to Michigan. No. So it's going to be a fun trip. It's going to be a fun trip. But we have five children and one does not even like to drive to town, which is like five minutes away. So we're going to have be, to get very creative. Uh, I'm going to put <laughs> earplugs in and let my wife deal with that and act like I'm just driving and not paying attention. So. Uh, we don't know how that's going to be because he can get kind of crazy. So. I like my sleep too, Patrick. <laughs> I only come out there if he calls me and is like in dire need of help. That's the only way. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. <laughs> she actually turns her phone on silent. So then she has the excuse of saying, oh, you know, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it go off. <laughs> so I'm like running back to the house to get certain things if I forget something. So uh, I had one morning I had uh, where we put the cow in the stanchion. My gate wouldn't close. And so my bull and then Allie, my, my little Jersey heifer, came in and they were like tearing up the thing. And I couldn't, I, I'm trying to milk a cow and she's getting freaked out. And, and I'm calling Misty on the phone and she's just letting it ring. She, <laughs> so I'm out there trying to fight these cows. I finally get my son out there and we, we handle it. But it's just, it was crazy. Um, which child is that? How long is the drive and the baby? Yes, it's the baby, Patrick. Um, he is 10 months old and he does not like his car seat. I don't think he likes um, anything. And it's like a 15 hour drive. Yeah. So, um, we've looked at some other options. Um, we had been looking into maybe investing in a camper for when we get to go on trips like this. Um, so that's some options that we were looking at that we wouldn't be so confined to confined to a vehicle to where we would be able to have space to kind of move around and go to the bathroom and um, hey, hopefully that will, hopefully that will help. I don't know. So we're, we're anxious to see, but that's also going to be a uh, kind of a, a prerequisite because we're actually going to Homestead of America. We are about the tickets too. Yeah. And, uh, and again, that's for us, that's still about 14 or 15 hours. So that's we'll in go to Virginia. Michigan and then we'll go back to Virginia in October. October so yeah. it's going to be fun. It, it really is. We're, we're excited about it. So, um, thank y'all all for joining us tonight. We were a little nervous just because we didn't know how this whole thing went. And when we first 
uh, went up to pull all this on. We were like, it's not working on our cell phone. So we finally got it figured out. And um, Overlook, uh, the, the problems we were having with the milking machine, uh, I don't know if you've seen which, what kind we have, but uh, the one we got was the one off Amazon that, that, that really is the only one on Amazon that's a true full-fledged milking machine that they, they, they sell or that people sell through. Um, it, it does. It's a great machine. It's just not put together well. It actually has a great concept. Yeah, um, the it's just idea a, of it is yeah, really good. It's just it's just, it's an imported version of some of the nicer American machines. Just to be honest with you, so um, I was being cheap. That's probably what the problem was. But it, it, it's doing good. It was losing suction. So there was a there was two little three little things that you could do to build the suction up to make it better. After we kind of fixed that and dealt with a few of the other little just small things. Uh, it works great now. I mean, it really does. Now, I'm, I'm not putting a lot of hope in it. I carry my hand milking bucket out there every day because that way I know just in case something happens, I'm right there. But, you know, um, it's worked good. Uh, you know, knock on wood. wood. We'll see what happens, but it's doing okay right now. Patrick, so. we would love to have you for lunch one day. That would be great. We've got lots of yummy snacks to grow in here. So we would love to have you. I'll take a day off and you can just come milk. That would be great. How about that? <laughs> Colby might put you to work. So. <laughs> I always turn up the radio. Steph T5 says, I always turn up the radio so that, I, that I couldn't hear my girls screaming. Well, Colby says that he's going to put his head buds in and plug it up to his phone and turn the radio up so he doesn't have to listen. But I'll have our, to deal with it. Our that. fifth child, I don't know if you can <laughs> turn the radio up loud enough because he will go nuts. He is. So. Uh, he's the handful. <laughs> Um, last thing talked about, you know, we, we have our pigs. I don't know if you've seen our pigs. Uh, pigs uh, come from Alderman Farms. Yeah, from Alderman Farms. They're uh, big. George and Peppa as their names. That's They were named off the show. So our, our fourth our fourth child named those. So uh, they've done well. They're actually growing. Uh, one thing I like about the American Guinea, and I know Tommy at Alderman Farms helped us tremendously on, on making this decision. But, you know, how p people say pigs stink and they, they're just nasty. The American guinea hog has been great. They literally sit probably, what, 50 to 100 foot from our back door. Yeah. And you don't smell them. I mean, actually, you smell the chickens over the, the, yeah, in the pigs. I mean, just in, in generality. But I tell you, they've been great. They're growing. Actually, I think they're going to be ready to hopefully, um, you know, she'll be coming in heat hopefully in the next month. That she we've read, is so. getting close. Yeah, I, can, I, can, I noticed a change in her this past week. I actually messaged Miss Patty about it and talked to her some because she, her little back is starting you, to get um, a lot bigger, which kind of lets me know that she's probably maturing some. And all of her um, underside where her teats and stuff are all of those are starting to really fill out and that's a big change from what she was so uh, she's got to they've got to be getting close so hopefully um they'll be mom and daddy soon oh, well we say soon hopefully sooner than than later right and see the thing about the american yes divers like you were saying that I, I think a lot of times when when people get feeder hogs if you don't just have the crazy amount of room or you can just deal with these big old hogs, uh, they tend to be a little overwhelming. And that's what we've seen too with American guinea hog. They're not overwhelming at all. I mean, they're and just, they're fun. My kids will literally yeah, get Yeah, I was just going to say, my, they're very gentle too because we, our ranges are 11, 7, 6, and four for my bigger kids besides the babies and they all get in the pen with them and they're never they don't ever knock them over they don't ever i mean they're very they're very good with kids they they're probably so fat and big now because uh, <laughs> uh we feed them all the old skim uh all from the old our milk. all the old milk all the old <laughs> skim so that's like their favorite thing they they'll they'll pass up anything for skim milk or, or old curds and whey basically off the milk so golf mania yeah, we, we love our cows. We have, okay, so on our rotational grazing plan, we have probably only three to five acres of rotational grazing. Now, we have we have about seven acres or so that our, that our homestead sits on. We own 36 acres. However, most of that's a pine thicket and then a lake. Um, so we're actually only truly grazing probably three and a half to four acres. Um, we're using half temporary fencing half um a permanent fencing and if you if you can rotational graze man you can have a good bit of cows on that land 
uh, because we just moved fence yesterday and these cows have more grass than really know what to do with. But um, we do have about 36 acres, but our homestead sits on about seven of that. That's actually truly that we're that we work with basically. Yeah. So step T five, it's something about the fifth, right? Got to be something about number five, making <laughs> sure we don't use lose any. All right, Pete's little homestead said, "I'm using your leaning trellis for my cucumbers. Ours actually, ours are not growing as fast. Well, as they we're have not in using any organ. I mean, we're not. We have not fertilized our cucumbers whatsoever, and we are starting to harvest now, but." Um, We've picked two, but they're the vines are headed that way, and we have several that have trellised up. They're not real tall yet, right. and they're not real far up the trellis. But we do have several that are headed that have latched on and are, that are climbing up. So we were a little we were a little behind on our garden this year, just because we had and and Aldermans can attest to this, and Patrick too. We had a lot of rain. It really wasn't a cold winter, but it was just a rainy winter. Um, it got cold right when we planted our potatoes. Um, but other than that, it really wasn't really that cold. Um, who's taking care of your farm? Ben and the grandma. Uh, anybody who is available. That's been the hardest thing to do is find somebody to milk to a milk. cow. Yep. Uh, not taking care of other animals, but to milk a cow. That's what's been so hard to find. It's not very common in our area. I mean, I can remember our um, extension service. We went to a meeting with her not long ago, and she was saying that 10 years ago, there was 38 dairy farms around here. <laughs> And now we're down to eight. No, four. Less, four. four. Okay, I knew four. it was just a handful. And actually, Elsa, the the milk cow that we have, came from one of those four. Yeah, uh, a dear friend of ours who um who really just I just learned a lot from on his dairy farm. So Stivers, he was already doing that. Go ahead, yeah, go look. She's probably the best addition to our farm oh gosh yeah because I mean, we can do so much with, with a gallon of milk with a gallon of milk. you can you can make so much so we made the culture cream the sour cream the yogurt um the milk the butter of course and then um the butter just, is my favorite and not only that with your waste again it feeds other animals so yeah if, if i mean we don't she really was let probably milk get that our far. best addition as far as everything that we can do so overlook yeah we, we were getting about two gallons we we did kind of go back down to about a gallon 0.5 0.7 on average so um patrick it does save on the milk that's for sure because oh we were going we were through five five gallons a week at least five or six gallons a week so definitely saves on the milk i mean it was a pretty big cost up front initially you know it was a big investment <laughs> but she she gives us enough to cover what we would normally drink plus more. So we have a, always have a huge surplus there. But it definitely has saved our grocery bill for sure. Alderman Farms, you're correct. And we really need help on trying to learn this more. Uh, we've kind of got homesteading down pack. We can just learn YouTube. That's really our biggest deal is making sure Are we know we what we're doing. Up so. something? No, he was talking about moderators. Oh. <laughs> I actually, we have another account. So I set it up as moderator because we don't know what we're doing anyway. So, <laughs> but anyways, um, but yeah, like our cows are doing great. Um, Elsa has been the best addition to our farm by far. Um, the males on the farm, you know, the the, the Jer Jersey bull, I love him to death. But to be honest with you, his goal is is, is to uh, make babies. So our Thanks, goal is Heather. to be sustainable and hopefully he can, he's doing what he's supposed to do. We have three three cows that we have here that can be bred by him we do have another bull with uh i'm sorry another bull with some other cows at, at another location kind of some bigger cows um so you know as long as they're doing what they're supposed to do they can eat the grass but other than that that's about all they're they're good for uh so i wouldn't challenge you to get a bull unless you just want to stivers i was you were talking about fencing um man the temporary, uh, temporary fence fencing. has been a major uh, we, this Initially, is our plan. it was a pain. It, though. We had a bull calf that was ridiculous. He but was we, crazy. After we got rid of him, we went to this temporary fencing. And don't be wrong, we don't do one strand like a lot of people do. But I popped these cows with that. I'd, I'd kind of rub it against them, and it popped them enough to where now they're scared of it. They won't even. I mean, they won't even step over it. If it's laying on the ground, they will literally walk around that that white poly tape. We did not do poly rope. We did not do wire rope. We did poly tape, which is a thicker um, mesh. With, with basically the the, 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 the conductor in, embedded in it. But I tell you what, that's been great for us. It's easy to move, easy to set up. I made I made a whole other paddock yesterday. It was about an acre. 
Uh, it took me about 40 minutes. So it, it's a great way to go. Now, the only thing that we're a little skeptical on, we're again, we're in a very heavy wooded area. So we are very careful on leaving them in, in there at night. So I do have permanent fencing right next to our paddocks where we put them back in there for the night. And then every morning after I milk about 536, I put them right back out. So, okay. you know. And I will say, speaking of the stivers, I mean, we got, we have Dedio, but he is very gentle. He's very laid back. He's not, um, which I know they say don't ever trust right. him, but I will say that we've never had any issues with him. Um, he's very, yes, the Overlook Valley. we That's what we've heard too. Jersey Bulls are some of the meanest bulls, but and we would never turn our back on them. We would never let our children be out there alone or, or you know, in an unsafe we, situation. It's a healthy respect. But he is very, I mean, he likes, he comes up to us so that we will pet right. him. But we've had people tell us before that they can't even get in the same field with their bull because they will just, he will literally try to run them over. And, and but he's a, not no, like that at all. Uh, if you have a bull like that, again, not the around your parade but i tell you i, I can't stand we a foolish cow know. or a foolish bull uh, i hated to get rid of our cow sizzle uh, or excuse my bull calf sizzle but i the thing about cows if you leave Thank a crazy you, cow if you leave a crazy cow with other cows or leave a crazy bull with other bulls they're gonna make your whole herd yeah. crazy um, I could already tell he was already affecting one of my other cows. So it just, at that he point, had it's just gone go. through. He, like, we, we built a temper, I mean, a permanent fence from one side of the house to the other, like along the backside, just basically just for him, because all of our other um, cows would come to uh, food with a bucket. So we would walk them across the front yard with no problems whatsoever. Even uh, Daddy O, the big, huge Jersey bull, I mean, he would come with us, but Sizzle just would not. So when we would try to get him in any little bitty tight space, he would literally, he was literally tearing down the uh, bob wire fence. So after chasing him around our property from one end to the other through the woods, we said this is enough. <laughs> You're like, correct, Overlook. Enough. He was one of those that he went to a, I mean, to be honest, he was probably going to a feed lot anyway, but you, it made me really want to eat a burger every time I messed with him because it was yeah. just like too much I mean, he, for me. He was just, he was raising our blood pressure. So we just, we, we knew he wasn't really for here. So um, we want cows natured like what we have. Um, well, we can walk them to feed. When we call them, they come. Um, and he was just not, he was not for us. So uh, other than that, uh, updated on the greenhouse, Misty has been great on that. It's doing great. We've done yes, more propagating time, and cutting, right. so we it's really been great. Um, I don't know if you watched the video on the tomatoes and the compost uh, pile. That was our first year to really have a big compost, and we used the Hugo culture uh, method into the raised beds, and that has been huge. Uh, the, the kind of old wood with the compost on top, those have actually surpassed some of the ones in the garden. Uh, so I, we've been real pleased with our compost, but also having that Hugo culture uh, mentality in our raised beds. I think that's been very beneficial for us. Talking about the expense, but how much have we saved in hay? Yeah, I mean, the, the fencing is, is expensive. Um, that was their, definitely our biggest expense. But when we did the, the polytate temporary fencing, because we've been able to move them and do small paddocks, a cow will eat pretty much any, any kind of grass that you put in front of them, only if you make them. Uh, if not, they're going to eat the, the, the fresher, newer grass and all the mature grass will stay there and grow. And that's why you have weeds all in your, your paddocks and all, everybody's got a bush hog those. I can, uh, if you watch the video that we put out, I think this morning or, or yesterday, I'm not sure. Um, but they will eat it down to where it's for, manicured. For not have, for, yeah. For so, feeding them not having to buy hay. Oh, definitely. We're, we're not grass farmers. So we have to depend on buying that. So in the definitely. long run, it's going to pay for itself, really. It does. And we were spending, I mean, again, we were going to spend, we added up regular cheap milk was about 700 to a thousand dollars a year. We were spending on milk. Um, if you're buying organic or, or non-homogenized milk, which we were buying from a store, a local co-op or a local store, I mean, we were, we could easily spend $1,500. So basically the reason we do some of the farmers more, the reason we try to sell what we can or do what we can, if we can cover a lot of our feed bills, um, you know, it's, it's really a non-event for us because we're used to working hard. We're okay to milk. I'm, I'm fine to milk every every morning. 
Um, but you are right. The, the most expensive thing is making sure they're they're getting taken care of a cow because it is a, it can be a big expense. Overlooked Valley Homestead said I had a beautiful black Angus cow, but she was so mean she cleared a oh six my gosh. foot fence. That's amazing. I'll let you keep that one. Yeah, oh my for goodness. real. All of our um, all of ours now yeah. are really really good. Now we've got some up on the other property, and which we haven't been um, around them a whole yeah. bunch, but because the other cows that they're with are being tended to by your father. That's but, right. Some family um, land. Yeah. So, um, but when we were tagging them, we had a few that were pr pretty rough, but we don't have to depend on uh, moving them from one place to another, that trying to the walk key. them with feed. You know, here we're so confined to our property and from fence to fencing, or, or I guess I should say paddock to paddock, right. to where they are. We don't have to really um, do that there, so that's not a. a and that's issue. another thing, your cows. And we could have gotten sizzle up there. That might have been better. It would have know. worked for him, but. But then one day you're going to catch him again. So, like the intense grazing, like Missy was talking about with paddock to paddock. When your cows learn the land and learn the the rotations, I mean, I open gates now. I don't even. I don't bring any food or any hey, feed with me. Hey, little house, thank you for they joining us. They literally will just simply make their way around like they're supposed to every once in a while my youngest little heifer will, will kind of walk around a little bit i have to kind of just kind of make sure she kind of gets in but other than that they're pretty good they're gonna follow the leader and uh yeah. Allie's our leader and she pretty much when she goes they go yeah so it works out really good now cows are the biggest expense on the farm especially when you talk about fencing but ultimately probably the biggest um benefit to our farm uh other than i mean don't your own bees have been huge too here because honey is such a high in demand in our area but uh, I tell you, cows are where it's at yeah. for sustainability anyway. Okay. Jamie asked, what is the size of your paddocks? How long are they on, are they on them okay. and how long do they rest? Um, basically, we we work with one, two, three, four, five, six permanent paddocks. And then we have one, two, three, four, or three, basically. I've made them three um, paddocks that we um, basically have uh, temporary fencing on. Now, what we do is we try to make them every Friday. Uh, that's the day that I tend to take off from my normal job. So I try to move them every Friday. Now, let me go back and say this. If there's still grass there um, or they seem like they're not eating all the grass, uh, I'm going to leave them because ultimately I want to make sure they're eating everything. I've not yet had to bush hog or come in and cut weeds or any of those things in our paddocks because we've left them on there to make sure they're eating all grass. Um, and, and that's the benefit. If you just let them just free range in this whole big open area, they're not going to eat everything. They're going to eat the, the finest grass or the, 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 the youngest grass, and they'll leave all this other junk that you end up having to cut down. Our paddock sizes uh, are pretty much around a half acre um, each. Now, the whole purpose of that is, is half acre enough for two or three or four cows at a time? No, but that's not the purpose. The purpose is to make them eat in that area and then move them over. Now, I, about a week, that they're ready to move but um for instance we um we had this last paddock just grew exponentially in our temporary fencing and i had three cows on that one half acre paddock for about two weeks two and a half weeks and the whole purpose was because it had grown so well because their manure had freshened it up and, and got it mm -hmm. fertilized so well that it was they were able to stay there and for a long time. And things like rain. Hey, Brizards, thanks for coming. Things like rain kind of play an important oh, gosh, factor huge. in it, too. So, like, this past two, not this week, but the week before, we went through, like, a three-week drought, extremely hot, no rain whatsoever, and so the grass wasn't growing at all. So that played a major factor into it. And then we had, like, two or three days of some really, really good rain, and then the grass come back out. So that... The rain also plays like a major ordeal in it too. And that that um, is that is definitely a, the biggest part of and grazing is if you see that you're having a drought or you're seeing you're having a major flood, I tend to leave my cows in one paddock to where if they're gonna you know tear up a paddock or they're gonna eat it down. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I try it's to keep a, them together. It's to amazing where, because if there is no rain, it's not growing that well. But then if it's raining too much they and they're all, all in there stomping around, then they're destroying it. So it's like a it's a balance. Kinda, yeah, it's a it's kind of a balance and act for sure. Yeah. All right. Overlook Valley. I saw something that they oh, we have goats, cows, and chickens here. 
So the only thing that we don't have is goats. We <laughs> there are lots and lots of people around us have goats. Uh, um, goats was just something that we decided was not good for our family because we milk the cows. Um, so goat's milk was not what we would be interested in. And then really other than that, um, there are so many people that sell goats around here. So we wouldn't be able to make money off that. So there's really no real purpose for it. There's not a lot of oh, homesteaders around here, but there is a lot of people who, who have traditionally goats. farm that yeah. have goats. Um, and and really, there's just not for us. We can't figure out. We want, when we talk about our homestead, we always want to find ways to either it make us money or sustain us because we want to be good yeah. stewards and have satisfaction in that. For us, we can't figure out where goats play into that in our area because either a lot of people have them and they sell them as pets or there's not really people buying them here for any kind of meat source or milk source. So it just, for us, it just didn't work. Um, not saying the goats are bad or anything, just, it just didn't work for the max. I mean, we, we, we love our cows. Um, and the pigs was a big step for us because we were trying to figure that out. We always watched the Aldermans and, and we were really excited about that. And I tell you, they've been great. I can't say enough good things about uh, American, American guinea hogs. hogs. I mean, yeah. if you, if you're looking for a great hog that's good with kids, any any animal you have to respect, don't get me wrong. But if you're looking for a great animal that that's good with kids, that's a slow grow, that's not going to mess your yards up or, or just make this big waller, American guinea hogs is where it's at. Okay, so they said that they just sell them, and that's awesome. Um, there's like we were saying, there's so many people in our area that have goats that you know just sell them, and a lot of people do make decent money off them. We have a friend though that he has. How many new kids? Several, and he's had a little bit of a hard time. But he, for um, him, if 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 they're blue eyed and they're young kids, he can sell them quick. If it gets past a certain time, then he, nobody he said, wants them. He's he said, stuck with them. them. So I guess that for us, it's just agree, not Pete. an adventure. We we were we would rather not go down. So hey, thank you, single dad. We'll we'll jump over too, no doubt. Um, other than that, that's kind of some of the updates that we had. Pros and cons, again, for the, the non-GMO organic gardening. We'll talk more about the corn, but that's the only thing that really flopped for us there. And I wanted to, to address, um, one of the girls had posted something on Facebook that's one of my friends. And she said, I just don't see how you do it all. You're like superwoman. And that's so far from the truth because um, I don't work full time. Colby does. Um so we don't do full-time homesteading as our job. Colby works a full-time job and um, I stay home. So I do what he doesn't do in the morning, tend to the cow, uh, like feed them hay, the chickens, the pigs, things like that. Um, but it's a matter of time management for us. I know what I have to do during the day. If I know that I have a lot of cream on my meal, I need to get my butter made. I kind of plan uh, ahead and that I, like I have goals for each day. Some get met and some don't, but planning ahead, I think is the most important thing. So Clarissa, I don't know if you're on here, but to address that, you know, it's, it's just a matter of planning and being organized and trying to make sure that you know what has to get done for the day and um, there are times where we have things happen that we're, we can't get to at all. But um, like I was saying, if I, if Kobe goes out and milks and I have a, a three and a half gallon jug and the majority of it is cream, then I know, OK, tomorrow I need to get this pulled out. I need to get butter made. So it's just kind of a matter of organizing and know what to um, what to do for the day. Harvest in the bounty. We. <laughs> Yes, cows do like apples. We actually have cut apples in half and gave it to them. Uh, we do have apple cider vinegar and, and pretty much every diet of every animal that we have. Um, but cows will lick that up or eat apple to pieces, for sure. All right. I think we're going to jump off here. I know my crew is probably getting ready for bed. But I thank can't believe there's so no kids running back yeah. here and jumping around. So I that's, threatened them. I know we did threaten them. I'm not, it's, that's the truth. Um, but hey, we're going to jump over to single yes, dad and watch him. So everybody hopefully can watch does. him as well. So, well, thanks guys again. Um, we were super excited to jump on and kind of share how our week has gone and things that have gone on. 
Um, we hate we've lost the storm, but like we said, sometimes that's just part of it. You win some, you lose some. It's been a battle with the garden, um, with the bugs. So, you know, it's just, it's part of it. The work is always um, worth it in the long run. It's always worth it. So thanks again, guys. And we thank will, you all for being here. Yes, we will hopefully catch all y'all next Wednesday. We love to read comments from y'all and get to know y'all better. Um, so anyway, happy homesteading, y'all.